Today I've got this nice problem from the 2021 Simon Moraes math contest. So let's see what we have. Our goal is to determine all Riemann integrable functions on the real numbers such that for all natural numbers in f of x equals n over 2 times the integral from x minus 1 over n to x plus 1 over n of f of t dt. And this equation has to hold for all real numbers x. Now a couple of notes before we get started. So the first is that this is a university level math contest. And that means there might be more advanced topics. And you'll see that there are more advanced topics, this notion of integration even. But the problems are generally not more difficult than Olympiad style problems. In fact, they're often less tricky than those types of problems. They just require a little bit of knowledge of advanced topics. And then another like maybe universal truth of functional equations, and I would consider this, as a, this a functional equation, is that the final answer is probably a very simple function. Okay, keeping that in mind, let's get to the solution. Okay, so now we're ready for the solution. We're going to start with the fact that any function defined like this in terms of an integral is differentiable. And that's simply because of the fundamental theorem of calculus part two. So that means we're able to write this derivative f prime of x as, well, it's gonna be n over two times the derivative with respect to x of this integral. So x minus one over n, x plus one over n, f of t dt. But then, like I said, applying that fundamental theorem of calculus part two, we'll see that this is equal to n over two, and then we have f of x plus one over n minus f of x minus one over n. But now that kind of thing holds for all natural numbers by our assumption right here. But since it holds for all natural numbers, that means we can take a limit and it will still hold. So here we've got this means f prime is equal to the limit as n goes to infinity of, I'm going to write this as f of x plus 1 over n minus f of x minus 1 over n over, so this is going to be 2 over n. And now I'm going to make a little bit of a substitution. And what will that substitution be? Well, it'll be in order to put this in terms of something that looks a little clearer. And that is, I'm gonna set h equal to one over n. And notice as n goes to infinity, h will go to zero. So this turns into the limit as h goes to zero of f of x plus h minus f of x minus h over 2h. And that's something called the symmetric difference formula for the derivative. Okay, so well, we know that this limit exists because we know it's equal to f prime, but that also should be equal to the derivative. So everything is checking out. And then using a similar method, you can check that all derivatives exist. So that means that this is in fact a smooth function. But since it's a smooth function, we can do a Taylor expansion. So let's do that. We just argued that all derivatives of this function f exist. And now we're going to do a series expansion based at x. And that'll be of f of t. So what is that going to give us? Well, f of t can be written as follows. So it'll be the sum as, I'm gonna use index k just because we have an n over here. So the sum is k goes from zero to infinity of the kth derivative of f evaluated at x over k factorial times t minus x to the k. So like I said, that's gonna be based at x. All right, and then what we'll do from here is plug this into our given over here. And then we can hopefully maybe like find, well, the value of these derivatives here. So let's do that. So we've got f of x is equal to, well, n over two, and then we have the integral from x minus one over n up to x plus one over n of, well, now it'll be this sum right here. So we've got this sum as k goes from zero up to infinity of f, k 
k of x over k factorial times t minus x to the k. And now we're gonna rewrite this bringing the sum out. So that's gonna leave us n over two and then we'll have the sum, k goes from zero to infinity of, well, notice that fx k over k factorial is a constant with respect to the integral. So I can bring that out as well. So I've got the kth derivative of our function evaluated at x over k factorial. And then I have our integral from x minus one over n to x plus one over n of t minus x to the k power dt. Okay, good. Now let's take this integral here and bring it up here and we're gonna do a little side calculation. Okay, so let's see what that side calculation will be. What I'll do is I'll set u equal to t minus x and then also that means that t is equal to u plus x. So now when t is equal to x minus n, that means that u plus x is equal to x minus one over n, which means that u is equal to minus one over n. And likewise, when t is equal to x plus one over n, that means that u plus x is equal to x plus one over n, which means u is equal to one over n. So that means this turns into the somewhat simpler thing, which is the integral from, let's see, minus one over n to one over n of u to the k du. But then that's gonna naturally split into two cases. That's because this region of integration is symmetric about the origin. And so it's gonna split up here. If k is odd, we get zero. And if k is even, well, we'll get twice the integral from zero to one over n. Twice the integral from zero to one over n of u to the k du. And now let's bring that down here, but as we bring it down here, we're going to re-index our sum so that we only have even terms, just for simplicity. So now we have n over two, we'll still have the sum as k goes from zero to infinity, but now we want to go through only the even terms, which means we'll have the two k derivative of f evaluated at x over the factorial of two times k. And then we have this integral from zero to one over n of u to the two k du. Okay, so I think that's looking good. Okay, so let's see. That can easily be simplified as well. Notice we'll have one over two k plus one times u to the two k plus one evaluated from zero up to one over n. That's for that leftover integral right there. You know, just by the power rule. So putting that all together, we have something quite nice. So we're gonna have n over two, and then we have the sum as k goes from zero up to infinity of, well, let's see, it's gonna be the two k derivative of f evaluated at x. But now we have a kind of a lot of new stuff in the denominator. We've got this two k plus one multiplied into this two k factorial. That's gonna pretty clearly give us a two k plus one factorial. Furthermore, we've got this one over n to the two k plus one, but that's just gonna give us an n to the two k plus one in the denominator. Now I'm gonna make one more simplification before I move that up and then we'll finish it off. And that is, I'll take this n right here, cancel it with this right here, the plus one part of the n to the two k plus one. Okay, so let's get at it. So after a bunch of work on the last board, we ended up with the following equation for f of x. Now from here, I'm gonna write out the first couple of terms. So here we have one half, and then the k equals zero term is simply gonna be f of x. You can check that, but that's pretty straightforward. Then the k equals one term, well, we'll have the second derivative over three factorial times n squared. Then the k equals two term will be the fourth derivative over, it'll be five factorial times n to the fourth, and then it's gonna keep going. So let's recall that this has to hold for all n. That's because we built this off of this formula which holds for all n. But 
check it out. All of these terms right here tend towards zero as n tends toward infinity. So on the last board, we were able to write our function as follows. So we have a one half that canceled because of that evenness. I don't think I was maybe as explicit about that as I should have been. So now I'd like to write out the first couple of terms of this. So notice the k equals zero term will simply give us f of x. Okay, and then what do we get from there? Well, notice the k equals one term will give us the second derivative over three factorial times n to the squared. Then the k equals two term will give us the fourth derivative over five factorial times n to the fourth and then so on and so forth. So next we'll have the, sec the sixth derivative over seven factorial times n to the six, and then it goes on and on and on. But let's notice we've got an f of x here and we have an f of x here as well. So, so those are gonna cancel and that'll actually allow us to solve for f double prime of x. So solving for f double prime of x, we have the following. So f double prime of x will be equal to, let's see. So it'll be equal to negative three factorial times n squared times the fourth derivative over five factorial times n to the fourth plus the sixth derivative over seven factorial times n to the sixth, so on and so forth. Okay, but I guess the important thing here is that this n squared term will cancel and always leave us with an n in the denominator. So in fact, perhaps we could factor some stuff out. We would have minus six over n squared, and then left over, we'll have the fourth derivative over five factorial, plus the sixth derivative over seven factorial and so on and so forth. But now let's take a limit as n goes to infinity. But the limit as n goes to infinity here is pretty clearly equal to zero because we've got this n in the denominator. Oh, but all of this was built off of this equation over here which holds for all n. So if it holds for all n and the limit is zero, that means that f double prime itself must be equal to zero. But now f double prime is equal to zero for all x because we know this holds for all x. But that's just a simple differential equation. We can integrate twice and we'll have f of x is equal to a constant ax plus b. And then, well, that's actually the final answer. This is the final type of function that remains after imposing this rule over here. Now I guess there's like one more thing to do, and that is to actually check that this function satisfies this given equation. But I'll let you do that, it does. So if you've liked this video, consider subscribing. It would really help the channel out, and that's a good place to stop. Thanks for watching and sticking around until the end of the video. And since you're here, don't forget to gently press that like button. Subscribe, ring the bell, and select all notifications to never miss a video. If you want to get your name in the credits like you see here, access the live seminar series, review videos before release, and more, go to patreon.com slash michaelpinmath and become a Patreon member today. If you want full ad-free course content, subscribe to my second channel, Math Major. I've got courses on linear algebra, complex analysis, and proof writing, among several others. And that's everything. Bye.